Hi everyone, we have uh, with us uh, Bilge Selik today, a student from uh, TU Eindhoven, and uh, she's going to present us uh, a different uh, flavor of uh, AutoML, uh, some solution that work on evolving data. Something that I would say is a little bit at the intersection between uh, AutoML and continual learning. It's a very interesting topic, uh, great, uh, I mean, I already read the paper, so I know that it's a great work. So the floor is yours. And thank you for joining us today. Hi, Tony. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I will quickly share my screen. Let me know if you can't see it or if there is any problems. OK, I think it's working. Uh, today, uh, my name is Bilge, uh, and I'm a PhD student at uh, Technical University of Eindhoven. And today I'm going to talk about our research on adaptation strategies for AutoML methods to be applied uh, on the evolving data settings uh, with my supervisor, Joaquin Lanskaren. This is the beautiful Eindhoven, uh, if you haven't seen it before. Uh, here is the outline of my presentation. Uh, I will very briefly talk about AutoML uh, and the methods that we apply. I'm, I, I think it's quite unnecessary for this uh, group, but just to have the complete picture. Uh, then I will explain the online learning uh, challenges, uh, especially the concept drift that we focus on. Uh, and then I will introduce the adaptation strategies we developed for AutoML methods so that they can be applied uh, with evolving data. And finally, I will present the results of our experiments uh, and the, the conclusions that we draw up from that. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please just interrupt me. I tend to speak quite fast <laughs> and non-stop if nobody asks anything. Uh, so what do we try to do with AutoML? We are trying to optimize a series of actions that will turn the raw data into the desired output within the budget uh, constraints uh, in an automated way. Uh, this could be a full machine learning pipeline or a neural architecture. In this research, we focus on the full machine learning pipelines, but we think that it could also be applied to the neural network uh, structure as well. Uh, automation can be aimed at different stages, uh, but uh, in this research, again, we focus on the combined algorithm selection and hyperparameter optimization problem, which can be formulated as follows. I will not go into detail. Uh, the set of algorithms A can also be a set of pipelines, full pipelines that include data and feature preprocessing or meta learning or model post processing, which tend to create a large search space. This is why efficiency is quite important um, with uh, AutoML techniques. Uh, and hence, we focus on three efficient and accurate, uh, well known uh, AutoML methods, with each of them with a different uh, optimization approach, uh, namely Bayesian optimization in auto skill learn, evolutionary approach with T pods in addition to gamma, uh, and random, research, random search with uh, stacking post processing in HDO. Uh, I'm definitely not going to explain <laughs> things in detail. I just want to very shortly reminds uh, what is included in these libraries, what do they do. Uh, with AutoSkill Learn, the Bayesian optimizer phase, AutoSkill Learn is one of the most popular approaches, and uh, with the Bayesian optimizer phase, there is the uh, random forest based uh, SMEC algorithm. Uh, it also includes a meta learning based warm starting, which initiates the search with the pipelines that already performed quite well with similar data sets. Uh, and at the, at the end, uh, it builds, it uses a grid ensemble uh, selection technique to build an ensemble out of the classifiers that the Bayesian optimizer finds. Um, Teapot, on the other hand, is again another uh, popular uh, uh, library that uses evolutionary computation. Um, it uses, it structures the machine learning process as a GP primitive and constructs the GP trees out of it. Uh, the generation and optimization of the trees are done with genetic programming. Uh, so the evol evolution of the pipeline operators as well as the hyperparameters are done with the GPs. Uh, it includes multiple objectives. First, to uh, maximize the classification accuracy and also minimizing the pipeline's overall complexity. Uh, unlike uh, AutoSkiller and Teapot's output is not an ensemble, but single best performing pipeline, uh, which is discovered according to the accuracy, classification accuracy. Uh, Gamma is another uh, AutoML library that also uses the evolutionary search, uh, but instead of 
uh, instead of synchronous evolution, evolution, it uses asynchronous evolution, which could be faster. Uh, it also uses the same uh, automated ensemble technique AutoSQLearn has. Uh, and one other advantage of the Gamma library is the modularity feature that it provides. Uh, it allows to compose different AutoML systems by adding your own subcomponents or extend with new AutoML search algorithms or even uh, post-processing techniques. Uh, and finally, we also included HTO, which is another well-known uh, AutoML method with included in the HTO framework. Uh, it includes basic data processing, uh, pre-processing, and uh, applies random grid search in a predetermined hyperparameter space, which is different than the first two uh, approaches. Uh, it trains a stacked ensemble model in the post-processing phase, uh, and the output is a leaderboard, which is basically a ranked list of the models that uh, search, uh, random search uh, finds, uh, and this could be exported for the predicting uh, data. So, so far it was quite familiar, so I wanted to speed up uh, there <laughs> to just not repeat things that are already been uh, probably repeated uh, quite a lot, but these platforms, these methods actually quite well performing and uh, with the batch data, and there are several studies that compare them in these settings. Uh, yet we know that more and more data is generated in the form of data streams instead of the static databases. So one interesting question in the AutoML uh, research is to ask how would AutoML methods perform in these data stream settings? So the first thing to understand is what is different with online learning set setting. Uh, these are the main uh, characteristics of online learning or constraints of online learning. First of all, the models are need to be trained and used for prediction without having the uh, complete training data beforehand in an incremental way. Uh, the arrival speed of the data stream uh, forces that each sample uh, needs to be processed in real time or almost real time uh, with a single pass and then discarded. Uh, actually, you can relax this single pass constraint, but only up to a certain uh, degree because uh, there is the limited part of it, limited uh, time and memory restriction. So only a part of the data can be stored uh, in memory. Uh, and finally, the data stream should be considered as infinitely long, which makes it, which makes them impossible to process by, by most of the data mining approaches. So these are the basic uh, uh, constraints, uh, properties of online learning. Another big challenge, uh, which is of course not included in every online setting, online learning setting, but most commonly is concept drift. Uh, and which is also the focus point of our research, which could be described as this un unpredictable shift in the underlying distribution of data over time. Um, the assumption, main assumption in most data mining applications is that the discovered patterns by the machine learning algorithms in the data are static. Uh, however, with the data streams, it's uh, much more likely that these patterns evolve over time. Uh, and they, therefore, they must be analyzed in almost real-time uh, manner. Uh, some of the common examples of online learning, that uh, online learning applications that include concept drift uh, challenge uh, could be spam detection or learning from dynamic sensor networks, which uh, both of them uh, exist in the evolving, uh, constantly evolving environments. So it is a widely seen uh, issue in the online learning settings. How can it happen? So there are several ways that uh, the data underlying data distributions can change. It could be in the prior probabilities of the classes. It could be in the distribution of the input uh, data, which are the non-class attributes. Uh, and finally, it can also be in the posterior probabilities. Uh, this one is actually called real concept drift when there's a change in the posterior class probability uh, because that is the case that the uh, uh, decision boundary, the class boundary changes. Therefore, the previous decision models becomes useless or deteriorate in performance. Therefore, for us, this is the most interesting type of drift. Uh, and also the techniques that handle real concept drift usually rely on the feedback about the predictive performance of the algorithm rather than the data itself, as you will see and as we applied in our research as well. Uh, it's important to understand the concept of characteristics, and there are several characteristics uh, that define them, which leads to different categorizations. As I said, we focus on the class drift, the real concept drift, uh, which changes the which needs to change the model. Uh, and in terms of the, the categories, the types, we focus on abrupt and gradual drifts, which are determined with the drift duration and the drift transition. 
uh, we also include drift magnitude as an interesting parameter to check to understand how it affects this adaptation decisions, how it affects the model performance. Uh, here you can see the examples of gradual and abrupt drift. Uh, the, the solid lines show the drift centers and the, the, the dotted ones are the drift windows. Uh, only the gradual drift has a drift, drift window because uh, the drift occurs in more than one instance. On the other hand, an abrupt drift uh, at the middle of the data stream, the drift happens over only one instance. Uh, we also included mixed drifts that combine these two types of drifts uh, because it's more complicated, more complex to handle, uh, and also it's more likely to see in real data streams that uh, combines different uh, categories. Uh, to be able to adjust our pipelines to the shifts in the data, of course, first we need to detect these uh, drifts in a statistically significant way and uh, differentiate them from the outliers. So we need to be sure that, okay, this is the new distribution of the data and we need to adapt our model to it. Uh, there are several approaches for the drift detection and several uh, drift detection algorithms. They can affect the performance of the learner differently, as you can see from the plots. And this success actually uh, depends on the characteristics of the data stream. Uh, one of the most fundamental and much applied ones is DDM, uh, and there are several variations of it. In this research, we use eDDM, which is an improvement to the DDM algorithm, uh, so that it's also uh, performing well for the gradual drift, as well as the abrupt drift. Other advantages of the DDM approaches are that they don't require a lot of memory and they update the statistics quite fast, uh, which makes them to detect the drifts uh, early uh, and uh, update the model quite early. Of course, this can also lead to frequent alarming at the early stages of the learning process. How are we going to evaluate the online learning? Uh, the most common procedures are holdout, potential, and data chunk evaluation. Uh, you can apply holdout only if you use the earlier data for training and later for uh, testing. Uh, Prequential is a little bit different. It feeds the data one by one, and first uh, the newly arriving instances are used to calculate the performance, which is the testing phase, and then uh, updating the model, which is the training phase, when the label is also available. This is why it's also called interleave test and train uh, approach. Uh, in that case, of course, accuracy is not a single number anymore, but a stream of accuracy that changes incrementally. Uh, and it is quite useful when there is a concept drift in the data. Uh, in this research, we apply data chunk evaluation, which is a middle way approach between the holdout that applies the holdout sets, uh, but also the test and train paradigm. Uh, and we also apply a forgetting mechanism for a, with a fixed length sliding window. Um, the advantage over the instance-based preconcial evaluation is that uh, you don't punish the algorithm for the early mistakes, so you give some room for improvement, and the training time can also be measured, which is quite useful for automal setting. Uh, so with these characteristics in mind, uh, with online learning, the pipeline optimization problem should also change uh, with these additional challenges. Uh, when we consider the constraints and uh, how the evaluation works, pipeline optimization framework actually requires an adaptive feedback loop uh, that takes into account the online performance of the trained models. Uh, in this research, we focus on this adaptation loop and examine uh, different ways of connecting online learning with AutoML. Uh, considering the challenges and constraints on mind, we develop and evaluate six generic adaptation strategies for auto automatic pipeline design uh, for the streams, especially with concept drift. Uh, and we think these strategies can be applied to any AutoML system uh, that's, uh, that is run with uh, evolving data. All in each of these strategies, uh, you, the AutoML is run at least once at the beginning with the initial batch of data to start the pipeline optimization. I will briefly explain each of the strategies and uh, what we test there and what the hypotheses are there um, uh, to, to give an understanding of uh, what we are trying to do. Uh, in the first strategy, detect and increment, we include a drift detector, which observes the changes in the pipeline performance and then uh, updates the model that was initially found by AutoML run um, uh, to, 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 by training the pipelines incrementally with the latest S patches. Uh, the configuration of the pipelines and the ensemble weights in this setting remains the same as the previous uh, model. Uh, 
to be able to do the incremental learning, we actually had to uh, restrict the restrict the search space to the OTML uh, to do pipelines that has incremental learning capabilities, such as random forests and gradient boosting. Uh, here, we actually assume that the initial pipeline configuration will remain useful throughout the whole data stream. We only need to update the models with the uh, upcoming new data so that in case their performance drops enough that the drift is triggered. Uh, so the idea here, the, the hypothesis that we test here is that keeping a learner memory of the past data is beneficial uh, or not. The second one is also quite similar to the first one, uh, with, the, with the difference that we are running the AutoML without restricting the search space, uh, and we are retraining the pipelines from scratch when there is a drift detected. So again, we are testing the performance of pipeline refitting to new data, but this time without the learner memory. Uh, we include these first three strategies actually as an alternative to rerunning AutoML every time to understand if there is a need to repeat the pipeline of the initial pipeline optimization or not. The second two strategies are rerunning the AutoML uh, uh, when a drift is detected. Yet with the first one, detect a warm start, AutoML restarts when a drift is detected with the, warm, uh, with the uh, initial pipelines uh, that are found uh, and uh, evaluated uh, better for the past data. Uh, the assumption here is that the initial pipeline is no longer valid, no longer optimal, so we need to uh, uh, replace it, but there is still a correlation between past and present, so this, is, uh, this also tells us something about the drift characteristic. Uh, the ad other advantage of warm start is, of course, uh, a faster convergence and perhaps more applicable in the situations online learning set is that the time is more uh, limited. Uh, but of course, depending on the drift type, the magnitude, the type of the drift, uh, the previous pipelines could also be misleading the search and uh, causing uh, inferior performance. Uh, the detect, detect and restart is very similar to warm start, but this time we are restarting AutoML from scratch every time a drift is detected in the uh, data stream. Uh, this is, of course, the one of the most expensive strategies, uh, but it can also lead to significant performance improvements in case the drift is more significant as well. We also included some baseline strategies. The pre periodic restart is um, similar to a detect and restart, but we don't include a drift detector here. So whether there's a drift or not, we periodically restart AutoML from scratch uh, to see if using a drift detector is useful uh, and whether it's actually worth retraining the AutoML in certain intervals uh, despite the uh, obvious computational cost that it brings. Another baseline strategy is train once, which basically trains the AutoML at the beginning once and the resulting model is used to test the, each upcoming batch. Uh, here we actually test the natural capability of AutoML uh, methods, what, what happens if you actually do nothing and just apply it to a data stream and how it performs throughout the data stream. Um, quick question. Yeah. W w what's the exact difference between detect and retrain and detect and restart? Yeah, so detect and retrain uses the same pipeline. Uh, we don't really update the pipeline uh, models, the, the learners or the weights, but we just retrain uh, the, the, the models with the new data. So we, we restart, uh, we take the AutoML's output as the pipeline, optimal pipeline, and we just do uh, uh, a new retraining of the pipeline with the updated data. With the detect and restart, we actually rerun AutoML and come up with a new pipeline or attempt to come up with a new pipeline. So the idea is that uh, you can't really retrain the same pipeline. It's not enough. So you need something, the data changed so much that you need something completely different. Is it clear? Yeah. Can you give an example on what, what that completely different would look like? Um, the learners can change the, 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 the yeah, so the, the basically the, the, the hyperparameters can change, the learner can stay the same. So it's just tuning the, 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 the uh, pipeline again, uh, but we are assuming that the data requires more than just uh, retraining the, the, the pipeline. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. Uh, okay, so let's come to the experiments. Um, we uh, experiment on four real data streams, uh, which are popularly widely used in uh, online learning uh, and concept drift research. Uh, and we use three types of uh, artificial data, uh, three types of concept drift in artificial data, each of them with five levels of drift magnitude. Uh, 
the abrupt and gradual drifts are also introduced with label noise. Um, we use artificial data streams a little bit more in this research because they are more, they are for, for our purposes, they are more important to understand uh, uh, the effect of the drift, drift characteristics on the performance uh, because it's not really possible to uh, pinpoint the concept drift points nor the characteristics in the real data streams deterministically. Uh, you can find all the data streams in OpenML uh, website with the results of the several experiments that are done with them. Uh, in addition to the OpenML uh, libraries selected, each of them with a different uh, optimization approach, we also use Ozobegging and BLAST as baseline online learning methods, uh, which are specifically designed for uh, concept of data streams. Uh, but Ozobegging does, Ozobegging is an extension of the begging and boosting algorithm that draws with replacement uh, from multiple data sets. The difference in the online setting is that it simulates this multiple, uh, replace, the replacement with multiple data sets by retraining each arriving sample multiple, multiple times. Uh, and BLAST uh, builds an ensemble uh, on a given set of classifiers and determines the weights of the all ensemble members based on their performance on the recent observed uh, data samples. That's how it works and it's quite a strong algorithm for um, ensemble algorithm for the online learning setting. We also included the gradient boosting uh, as a baseline for incremental learning and we added a drift detector to apply it to data stream. Um, so in the results, in the experiments, we examine the performance of different adaptations uh, to understand the, understand the effect of the data stream characteristics, as well as our design choices. This is why we start with the effect of drift type. Uh, and in the plots, you can see the accuracy of adaptation strategies over time, uh, each with a different color, and the baseline strategies with the dotted ones with the tones of gray. Uh, you can also see the detected drift points uh, as marked on the accuracy uh, plots uh, by the drift detector. Uh, when we look at the drift type effect, first we look at the high abrupt drift, uh, and we can actually see a severe effect on the OTML performance uh, when the drift uh, occurs at the middle of the data stream. And only some of the adaptation strategies actually manage to recover from this drift. Uh, we can also see quickly that gamma is one of the quicker ones to recover after the drift point uh, that uh, the performance dropped. If you look at the performances of different strategies, uh, we can see that re-optimizing the pipelines from scratch after drift is detected, detect and restart, which is shown with the blue line, uh, and also detect and retrain work, works quite well uh, for Autodesk Elon and Gamma, uh, not so much for the HTO. Uh, we think that this could be because of the stacking procedure in HTO that uses a GLM, uh, the linear model by default, uh, which could be overfitting on the predictions of the new updated pipelines. Um, when we look at the baseline learners, we see that BLAST actually performs quite well uh, in Gamma and comparison, uh, in comparable to Gamma and Autosk Gilar's best uh, strategy. Uh, and it is relatively unaffected by the drift. It doesn't have the drop uh, as, the, uh, as the AutoML libraries. Yet after the drift point, uh, it doesn't, it underperforms, it falls behind the best performing strategy uh, in uh, both libraries. Uh, and we can see that also begging is outperformed throughout the whole data stream. Uh, there are also a few strategies that fail to recover at all. One of them is train ones. Uh, and in, the other one is the incremental uh, learner, uh, in, uh, incremental update of the best pipeline. Uh, this indicates actually that after the sudden drift, uh, it is probably uh, important and required to re-optimize the pipeline uh, or retrain the pipeline. Uh, when we look at the high gradual drift, the, the comparison of the strategies are quite similar. Uh, so we can see that the detect, retrain, detect and retrain or detect or restart are performing quite well. Uh, again, not for HTO, probably because of the same reasons. Uh, in addition to that, unlike the abrupt drift, we can also see that incremental learning is performing quite well for all of the libraries. Uh, when we look at the warm start option, uh, we can see that for Gamma and also for H2H it performs quite well, uh, but not so much for Autosk Learn. This could be because of the Bayesian surrogate model uh, being misled uh, by the warm start, by the initial pipelines. On the other hand, Gamma's evolutionary approach somehow manages to evolve from these previous pipelines quite well. 
Uh, the baselines are uh, especially BLAST is on par with the best options uh, with Kilma and S2S learn and uh, quite frankly better than most of them in HTO. Uh, but again, we see that other begging is quite uh, dominated throughout the whole data stream uh, and with GBM performing a little better, but not as much as the best performing strategies. Again, the train once is performing uh, inferior to the other strategies. Uh, periodic restart is, uh, is a little bit better, but it is still suboptimal. It could be related to the fact that the periods uh, that we take the retraining uh, is uh, constantly, frequently uh, falling behind the gradual drift occurrence, so it doesn't uh, adapt uh, quick enough uh, to the changes. Uh, and finally, we look at the mixed uh, drift uh, data stream. It is not uh, very different. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we, we, again, we can see that detect and restart performs quite well. Uh, one difference is that periodic restart also quite uh, uh, performs quite well, especially after the sudden uh, drift point, uh, which actually shows that rerunning the AutoML has advantages, especially when there are different types of drift uh, in the data. Um, in general, the AutoML uh, methods uh, and this, all the strategies perform better after the abrupt drift compared to the pure abrupt drift data stream. This is probably because there are also gradual drift points before and after this point, which triggers the AutoML retraining and uh, the, the, the uh, updating, uh, which makes uh, adaptation quicker and better. Uh, also, begging, um, if you compare another difference from the abrupt drift is the baseline comparison. If you look at the also begging and blast, uh, they still handle the drifts, uh, but they fail to make the performance of the best AutoML methods uh, even more free, even more obvious compared uh, to the abrupt drift setting. Um, so this was the comparison with the drift type. We also looked at the effect of the drift magnitude. So how big the drift should be so that these changes are seen. So, so far we only saw the, the highest level of drift uh, magnitude in the data. Um, the figure shows the results of Gamma library for increasing levels of drift from top to bottom uh, for the C abrupt drift data. Uh, you can see that as the drift magnitude increases, uh, the performance dropped, uh, drop also increases, uh, but the overall recovery period decreases. This is most likely because of the early triggering of the drift detector when the magnitude is uh, higher, uh, it becomes significant uh, quicker. Uh, retraining the models, when we look at the, the, the differences between strategies, we can see that retraining the models uh, sometimes, especially with the lower drift uh, level, performs better than restarting. Another thing obvious to see in, this, uh, uh, in these graphs is that the best adaptation strategy uh, changes with the drift magnitude, which is something that was theoretically suggested in the uh, drift research, but we can also see it uh, empirically here. Uh, I want to briefly show the real data stream results since they are relatively less informative compared to the artificial ones. Here you can see the plots of electricity data stream, which is a relatively small data stream with uh, different kinds of drift. Uh, hence, we can actually observe uh, more variation in the behavior of different strategies uh, and methods. Um, it's hard to come up with one conclusion, but we can say that detect and increment in all of the libraries performs uh, a little bit better with less fluctuation over time. Uh, Blast also performs quite well, uh, which could be because the auto electricity data set is known to be heavily autocorrelated, which benefits the Blast's uh, ensemble approach. Um, on vehicle data stream, which is larger and uh, which is thought to have more gradual uh, drift, both BLAST and also begging are uh, outperformed by the best performing uh, automatic strategies. Uh, few drifts are detected here, actually, again, because of the uh, gradual drift situation, uh, most probably. This is why the differences between strategies are a little bit less. Um, we also included a pipeline analysis because we wanted to understand the reasons behind these performance differences. So we, are we actually coming up with new pipelines or not? Uh, this is why we looked at the consecutive training points and what happens to the pipelines between these uh, points. In the figure, you can see the pipeline changes with the vertical uh, red lines uh, and the drift detections with the black marks on the accuracy plots. 
the, 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 the accuracy plots for the blue line is the detect and restart because that is the strategy that includes the, uh, the, the pipeline reoptimization. The detect and increment is also included as a comparison because that is the strategy that the pipeline remains the same, but we apply incremental learning with the new data, which is very similar to a typical online learning algorithm. Uh, so when we look at the results, when we, look, when we compare them, we can see that retraining the same pipeline uh, can outperform the baseline algorithm of the beginning, uh, but it is generally less, uh, um, less performing, uh, inferior to the restarting, uh, re-optimizing re the pipelines. Uh, the pipeline change points actually show that detect and restart indeed finds uh, new pipelines regularly, especially for the gradual and mixed uh, drift uh, data streams. Uh, therefore, we can actually see that although an initial automal optimization improves the performance compared to a baseline learner, re-optimizing the pipeline throughout the data stream can lead to different pipeline settings, as you can see from the uh, red lines, and uh, can have uh, clear advantages over the static pipelines. Uh, finally, we did several experiments with the drift detection. Uh, we wanted to understand the interplay between the adaptation strategy and the drift detector. Uh, we plotted the drift lines for each strategy. You can see them with the associated colors of the strategies. Um, it is for the gamma uh, on a mixed data stream. Uh, what we can see from the plots is that re-optimizing the pipelines, which is the restart strategy, leads to more significant performance differences with more fluctuations in the accuracy plots, which probably trigger the drift detector more often, and it leads to more re-optimization. You can see that uh, there are several drift, trig drift trigger points. On the other hand, detect and warm start results in more subtle performance differences and less frequent drift detector uh, triggers, even in the same data stream with the same number of drifts. Uh, we also wanted to evaluate the effect of the drip detector that we used, so we replaced it with five preset drip points, uh, one after the abrupt drift and four after the mid-gradual drifts. Uh, in the figure, you can see the, 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 the accuracy plots with the drip detector with the solid lines and the preset ones with the dotted lines. Um, there are some minor differences. For instance, you can see that for detect and restart, it's a little bit faster recovery with the preset. But in general, I think it's uh, uh, fair to uh, say that the performances of the strategies are uh, quite similar and does not change, which actually concludes that the, the, the drift detector is not the reason behind the performance uh, differences between strategies. Uh, finally, we also wanted to compare different libraries uh, on the same data stream and the same strategy. Uh, and we marked the, the drift points to understand if actually the drift uh, detection is uh, affecting the differences between libraries or not. Uh, you can see that drift is, this is the abrupt data stream, and you can see that after the uh, middle point, uh, abrupt drift point, in each of the libraries, uh, drift is detected, uh, more so in HDO and Otoski Learn. Uh, and autoskillon and gamma recovers after the drift point, where the pipelines are re-optimized, uh, but this is not the case with HTO. Uh, similar results were found for abrupt and mixed data streams. Uh, this actually supports our argument that the linear model used in the HTO's uh, stacking process is probably not adapting well to the changes in the data distribution. Uh, we still think HTO is a competitive and useful option, especially with the gradual drift, uh, and especially with inc incremental learning uh, strategy. Um, this was the uh, overview of all the results uh, with the <laughs> several experiments we have done uh, with our strategies. So I think it's important to understand what the main goal of this study is, because we wanted to have a deeper understanding of how the current AutoML methods uh, can be affected or how they would perform with evolving data uh, setting. Uh, and different types of concept drift, and how can we adapt them differently to become more robust. Uh, there were several different uh, conclusions from different experiments, but to sum up, I think it's uh, fair to say that uh, there is no ideal strategy, and the ideal adaptation strategy depends on the automal system, as well as the, the characteristics of the data system stream, specifically the concept drift characteristics. Um, we found that these strategies effectively help the AutoML to recover from the concept drift, and they can be rivals or even outperforming the baseline uh, online learning, uh, popular online learning uh, methods such as Ozobegging or Blast in different settings. 
uh, when we look at the comparisons between different automal techniques, it shows that both Bayesian optimization and evolutionary approach can be adapted uh, to handle the concept drift well. Uh, but it needs to be given the appropriate adaptation strategy and also the forgetting mechanism uh, for the data. Uh, even so, evolutionary methods can do this even faster by evolving the previous uh, best pipelines uh, as in, in the warm start strategy that we saw the results. Uh, we also saw that drift characteristics affect the learning algorithms in different ways and uh, different adaptation strategies may be needed uh, to optimally deal with them. So it is not possible to come up with just one strategy that will perform better in every drift uh, setting. Uh, but more importantly, this actually shows that there is ample room for improving the existing AutoML systems and also even designing an entirely new AutoML uh, methods that will naturally adapt to the concept drift uh, in evolving data. Currently, we are working on an online AutoML system designed for adaptive and continuous learning. Uh, we chose Goma library because of the ease of modularity and uh, the evolutionary approach to superior performance as we saw uh, in the experiments. Uh, for the third space, we are using the online machine learning library reverse, uh, which is mainly Python application of the extensive model library. Uh, if you want to see any further details of this research, you can check the following paper. And currently, if you have any questions or feedback, uh, it's welcome. Thank you for listening and bearing with me uh, to what the speedy presentation.